Bicycles were the preferred mode of transportation for children in Sackville in the 1970s and 1980s. We would traverse great distances on our bicycles. If we wanted to go somewhere, we just hopped on our bike. Maybe it took a few hours to get there, but you got there. We also didn't wear any safety equipment, and sometimes there were accidents. This week, I'm talking bicycles on Sackville Sunday Stories. So crank it up. House party, massive paper cut from here to here. There was a guy walking a ferret on a leash on Cobblewood Road. Bicycles were more than just a mode of transportation. It was really an expression of who you were as a kid. What type of bike did you have? What color was the bike? Uh, did you go out and buy some aftermarket stuff? Maybe you had a number plate on it. Maybe you had a basket. Maybe you got some sweet Cobra grips. Uh, it, it said a lot about who you were because a bike was really an extension of a personality of the kid in those days. I remember my first really cool bike quite well. It was a polished chrome BMX tricked out all in blue. Blue grips, blue crash pads, and blue tires. You see, I was the first kid on my street to show up with a bike that didn't have black rubber tires. These were blue, and the fact that they were blue blew everybody's minds. They couldn't get over it. It was just like I was, I was riding a bear down Prince Street instead of a bicycle. So hey, you guys check out that new record by Bonnie Tyler. Pretty sweet, pretty amazing video. And oh my God, is that a bike with blue tires? Tommy, get a Polaroid. After a couple of years, blue tires were, were really just commonplace. So many of the bikes at that time uh, came out with red tires, green tires, yellow tires. It just, it just didn't have its same shock appeal. I needed to step up my game. So that's when I went down to Sport Wheels and I talked to Ron Mayhew himself. I said, listen, buddy, I need something that's gonna, you know, impress the kids on my street. Like, what do you got? And he said, well, there's this new thing out now. They're called mountain bikes. It gives you the power and versatility of a 10 speed because you've got the gears, but it also gives you the off-road capabilities that a BMX would give you. It's the best of both worlds. And we've got this one right here. And he pointed to a candy apple red Norco Bigfoot bicycle. I looked at that bike and I drooled immediately. I wanted to lick it. Okay, it was like bright red, it looked just like a candy apple. I looked at him, trying to be cool, and I was like, oh yeah, how many speeds has this got, 10 or 12? He looked at me dead in the eye, and with the same amount of gravitas that Darth Vader said when he told Luke that he was a father, his father, he said, it's got 18. I took a step back, I'd never heard of a bike having 18 gears. I had to have it. I sold my BMX and started saving my money for that candy apple red Norco Bigfoot, which was over $400. But man, what a bike. My new hobby was saving money. I was stowing it away left, right, and center. The summer of saving. Meanwhile, I didn't have a bicycle. But my friend Mike Legere certainly had one. Remember earlier when I said a bike was really an extension of your personality? Well, Legere had this... Uh, KMX, I believe it was called. It was basically a bicycle that was fashioned to look like a dirt bike. It had a big plastic fake gas tank on it, big shocks, and it actually looked, it looked from a distance, you'd think, oh look, there's a motorcycle, but it wasn't. It was a big, heavy, heavy bike, and Legere loved it. So in the 80s, we used to have a thing called ride and double, right? So that would be, you'd put two kids on one bike. Sometimes uh, the kid pedaling would stand up and the kid would sit on the seat. Other times, my preferred method was, I would just sit on the handlebars. Get on, I'll drive you home. I'm sitting on the crash pad of this 80 pound MX monster of a bike. And we're going down the driveway from Sackville High to Metropolitan. Now we are, flying down that hill. Do you guys remember those stupid manholes in the parking lot of the Sackville High driveway? Stupid. Like, when they put them in, they, 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 they didn't dig deep enough, so they were like four or five inches um, above the pavement. It was super dangerous, and nobody did jack about it for years and years. So Legere and I hit that stupid, stupid manhole cover, and I got bounced off the handlebars. I fall, but, but, the back of my shorts, luckily, 
catch on to the reflector and gooseneck of the handlebars. So yes, while I did get a major painful wedgie from that moment, it also prevented me from landing crotch first onto that big spinning knobby tire. Just imagine you're hanging out at Kinsman Beach, enjoying a nice Dickie D ice cream on a sunny day, and you'll look up, and there's two teenagers coming flying down a hill, riding double, one of them getting a wedgie off the handlebars while he's trying to navigate the tire, not rubbing into his crotch. It was getting closer and closer because my, my shorts were starting to tear. If it, if it hadn't been for the high quality textiles used in those Ocean Pacific board shorts, I would have been done immediately. I start screaming to Legere. I'm like, stop, stop. He's like, I don't have brakes. What's going on? Will you stop this thing? Come on. Brakes up. No point in steering now. Take off. You steer this thing. In a, in, a, in a panic, in a panic, I look down and I see that tire going between my legs super, super fast. There's no brakes. So I mistakenly decide, well, what if I close my knees together on either side of the tire? I might be able to use the inside fleshy part of my knees as brake pads and stop this high speed rotating knobby tire monster. I pushed my knees together. Nothing but blood and skin just flew off my knees and right up my face. We were still going, and now I was worse for wear. Finally, those Ocean Pacific board shorts had had enough. They tore, and I landed crotch first onto that spinning tire. The momentum of the tire just basically threw me forward, so I face planted on the asphalt of the Sackville High driveway. Legere kept driving. So that super wide knobby tire just drove right through the crack of my behind and then over my back and shoulder. It's one of the most painful things I've ever experienced in my entire life. I was mangled, I was embarrassed, I was bloody, and I was desperate for a new bike. I had saved up a bunch of money, but at that point I, I could wait no longer. I cashed in a Christmas bond to bring me over the top. I needed $430 to get that Bigfoot. I went down to Sport Wheels a couple of days later and I bought that beautiful red bike. And that is another story. My name is Chad and you've been watching Sackville Sunday Stories and I will see you next week. Sackville.live is brought to you in part by the Doctor's Formula, plant-based supplements for professional athletes. And our friends at Quick Save Fuels on Cobbaquid Road, go to quicksavefuels.com to save. And still going strong after 43 years, Kaiser Subs. Yum!